Democrats on the Hill are facing an uncomfortable reality these days. With abortion bills stalled, the only real path to codifying Roe lies in the hands of voters this November. And that makes efforts to protect abortion rights a whole lot harder. And so let's discuss with Liz Smith, political strategist, Democratic kingmaker, and now author of the new book, Any Given Tuesday, A Political Love Story, which is out tomorrow and quickly going to be your August must read. All right, Liz, welcome. Congratulations on the book. Thank I'm giving you. you a big challenge. If you were running the show, how would you want Democrats to talk about abortion right now? Well, the most important thing to say is that Republicans want to take health care decisions outside of the hands of women and doctors and put them in the hands of politicians. That's the most important thing. They want to criminalize doctors and women for abortions. They want to force women who are the victims of rape, incest, or whose lives are at stake to give birth. And this is a life and death issue. And it is why we need everyone everyone to go out and vote no matter how they how enthused they feel no matter how they feel about joe biden this is a life and death issue for this country go beyond abortion should democrats be looking at this primary not as an election that's about republican policies versus democratic policies should they be telling america this is about democracy well absolutely i mean we see that uh, weekly with the January 6th hearings um, when uh, the president tried to incite an insurrection. And now, and I was here a couple weeks ago talking with you about this, Stephanie, now we have gubernatorial candidates across the country in Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, who don't, who are election deniers and who would not acknowledge the 2024 elections if a Democrat were to win their states. So yes, democracy is absolutely on the ballot. You write in your book that you see your role as someone who helps candidates be themselves. If you're advising Joe Biden right now, he's been on the world stage for decades. How would you apply that? How would you help Joe be Joe? Well, <laughs> This is where some of Joe's strengths come in. Um, Joe Biden is an extremely empathetic person. And we know that the American people are feeling a lot of pain right now. They're p feeling pain from the fallout of the pandemic, from high gas prices, from inflation. And there is no one who feels their pain more than someone like Joe Biden. So he needs to get out you know, away from the White House and among the American people in communities across the country where they are feeling this pain and speak to them directly. OK, then perfect. I'm, I'm so glad you brought up gas prices because I want to give you a messaging challenge. We know inflation is a huge problem. One of the biggest drivers of inflation is gas prices. But we just learned today that gas prices are 50 cents lower than they were at the peak in June. If you're Joe Biden, if you're Democrats right now, how do you get this message out there? Well, we need to continue to talk about it and the progress that we've made, but it's not far enough, right? It's still in California, you see gas prices uh, at five ninety a gallon. So we can't, you know, spike the football quite yet. But we should be talking about the progress that he's been able to make and how we are producing more oil under his administration to alleviate costs um, than at almost any time in history. Can the Democratic Party, you know how difficult it is, fit under one tent? I think back to the infrastructure bill, now a law, a massive, massive win for Democrats. But they didn't really spend any time running a victory lap and showing that to America because they had more ambitious plans with Build Back Better. Um, look, I, I think the beauty of the Democratic Party, at least in in my opinion, is that it's a big tent party. Um, and it is a party that should be a 50-state party, uh, one that doesn't impose purity tests where a, a West Virginia Democrat has to be the same as a New York Democrat. But um, Mayor Pete and the administration are going out and making the case 
all across the country and in, in media markets, big and small, that the infrastructure bill will create good jobs, will rebuild uh, roads and bridges, will help underserved communities, and is a huge, huge investment in the future. And I mean, think about how long, how long we have been talking about um, infrastructure and improving it. I mean, it, it felt like every week under Donald Trump was infrastructure week, and we've finally gotten it. But it's more than just that. We need to talk about what's at stake in this election. It's we've gotten this stuff done, but what happens if we hand the keys of power over to the Republicans? Well, one, they have no solutions to offer any economic relief to the American people. And when they get power, we know what they'll do. They want to uh, to criminalize abortion and they want to make it and they want to make it impossible for a Democrat to get elected president. And the only, the only agenda we've seen put forth thus far from Republicans is from Rick Scott. And it's something that would sunset um, Social Security, Medicare, raise taxes on working people. And so we need to be talking about that every day of the week. Because as Joe Biden had always said, and I remember in 2012, and I talk about this in my book, Any Given Tuesday, He's not running against the almighty. He's running against the alternative. And the alternative in the Republican Party is not a party that wants to help the American people and does not want to alleviate any of the pain that working Americans are feeling right now. Ever skilled Liz Smith, <laughs> you just had to eat up the time, give the name of her book, and not give me the opportunity to ask if she thinks Secretary Pete is the next guy running for president. Very tricky, Liz Smith. I will bring you back here soon. I'm on to you. She doesn't want to answer questions about Pete Buttigieg. Did you hear that? Liz, congratulations on the book. Great to see you. And I'm thinking about that. We need to accept our elected officials where they are. A West Virginia Democrat is different from one in the state of New York. Any given Tuesday, a political love story comes out tomorrow. Liz Smith, thank you. Come